Hi, scrapbook.com. I'm excited to have you here with me today in the Vicki Booten booth with American Crafts with my new mixed media line. Um, I'm really excited to share this. I have been scrapbooking for a long time and as well I educate and I teach all over the world and the one thing I have found with uh, paper crafters and mixed media that people don't feel like they're an artist or that they can try a lot of these uh, painterly techniques and I think you can. So I wanted to come out with a line that would make mixed media easy. So the whole idea, some of these steps are literally one, two, three, wow, and you're done. So let me run through a couple of the products that I have and what my thinking was behind them. What's kind of exciting is I designed a line like I would use it. So if we were friends scrapbooking together at a crop or in my studio, this is what I'd pull out for you to use. So it's what I wanted to share with you as well. So I came out, the first thing I like to add when I'm doing anything that is with paint or inks is um, a colorant. So we came out with three different acrylic paint sets. So you have a more neutral set, a cooler set, and a warmer set. They're nice thick paint, so they're great if you like to do jelly printing or mono printing to cover your wood uh, projects or to paint, of course, on paper. So the colors are really fun, the packaging is fun. The other thing that I love are um, watercolor crayons or water soluble art crayons. So these sets come in a set of eight, again, in a cool palette a neutral palette and a warm palette. You can use it similar um, to an oil pastel or you can get the pigment right off the crayon with a water brush or you can put it on your palette and paint with it. The fun thing with these too is there's lots of pigment in there so you're not going to go through these crayons really quickly to finish a project and I love that they travel. So if I'm on an airplane and I want to paint I could have my water brush and a crayon set and I could get a project done. And let me just give you a little peak. So this I doodled the color on a little tag and this is directly with water. So you can see how much pigment is in those crayons and it's a great fun palette because you know if you know me I'm all about rainbows and butterflies. I like lots of color so the palette reflects that. So the other thing, once I get my color laid, uh, I like to then add some texture. So I came out with mediums I use all the time. So just your basic mediums, I have a matte acrylic gel medium, which is more fluid. So if you need to glue a background or decoupage, that would work great. And a similar one to that is the glaze. And that's the idea with the glaze is it's a heavier body. So if I want to run it through a stencil or I want to adhere something that is a little chunkier, that would work great. The one thing that was on my wish list, I love bling. So if you follow my work, you know I like things that shine. So the one thing I wanted to come up with is a silver glaze, a gold glaze, and an iridescent glaze. When I actually got these um, to sample, they were beyond what I had hoped for. So the fun thing, like look at this little card. I hope you can see the shine at home. I wish you were here with me so I could show you. This is with a palette knife, so you can see, look at the gloss and the shine on that and the texture. The other thing I like is it's not too wet, so the wet, you don't get that kind of like um, shadow or halo. It works really well on paper. This is the same medium with water. I have, there's the gold, so you can see it's really super shiny, and the iridescent, which is just like I always love, just kind of like a colorless bling. I want to show you as well, I was just playing a little earlier, and this is the gold glaze applied with a paintbrush, just with water, and with the art crayon. So I could add what the uh, versatility of this product is, I could make my paint shiny with some sparkle, I can make my watercolor shiny with some sparkle, so I'm really excited about this one. I want to show you as well a layout because I want to get you the, um, the concept. When I teach, people are really afraid to try these items. So this whole idea with this line is kind of introductory mixed media. Let's get you started with something that is literally one, two, three steps, and then you can get a wow uh, um, finished product. So what I did with this one, I thought, okay, I would normally go and put paint right to paper, but how could I make this where it's almost foolproof? So I took a sheet of um, acetate, I painted 
the background, which is nice because the acetate is non-porous, where paper is porous and it would be a little trickier. I painted the acetate background, I misted it with not too much water, and I stamped this painted background on. So step one, that was it. And then of course, remember I said I like texture, so you see the gold in here, that's the glaze. So that was this glaze product that I just troweled on with a palette knife or if you have an old room key or your old bank card or um, whatever you have that like, has a little bit of stiffness to it, troweled it on, let it dry. So two steps so far. And remember I said I love to add the bling. I put, you can eat, use either art medium. A lot of times the heavier glaze, just you have to watch your drying time, but don't worry. Again, you aren't gonna knock this out the ballpark the first time you do it. It's okay to practice and play. I use the glaze and then I always start with a chunkier of the glitters to the finer. This glitter here is mica flakes, but it looks almost mimics uh, gold foil or gold leafing. Then you have a faux glass glitter, which I've loved for years and was glad that we could find one that isn't actual glass that will cut your fingers. A chunkier glitter and a fine glitter. So you always want to remember to start thick to thin so you don't fill in your whole area before you get to the chunky one. And that literally one, two, three steps to get a technique like this. So I'm really excited about those products, but of course I had to go beyond that. So you kind of have things that are pretty basic and easy to use that you can do really fun mixed media backgrounds. I don't care if it's on a card, if it's on a scrapbook page, if you like to plan artfully, if you are an art journaler, the big thing is color, the packaging's fun, and it's just a great way to get art into your uh, craft projects. Once I um, had those kind of figured out, of course I love stencils, and I did them in three packs. I started with circles, so it's something that, you know, is a great basic shape, and then a more linear shape, so the two layer well as well together. Stamps, because I love stamps, and I love steel rule dies, so we went with a feather pattern. There's some great phrases in here if you want to make cards, or they'll work great in your art journal, your layouts. I have branches, and you might think, why branches? I like the branches because when I get to the flowers and the moths, I can layer them. So it's just a fun way to have an accessory stamp set that will work with some of your flower sets and um, some of your insects or um, even uh, if you had some bird stamps. So it's kind of fun. And then they have dies for the basic, the main shapes in here. And of course, in kind of my signature color, the turquoise. So once you have those stamps, you have your stencils, we need to then create um, layers with the paper. I love ephemera packs. So I went, instead of one ephemera pack, I did a die cut shapes pack, a photo frames pack, and labels pack. There's 40 pieces in the label stickers and the die cuts and 18 photo frames in varying in size and even circles because I have to get the circles in there. So it's lots of fun, these all layer together. And of course, I had to come up with something else to layer in there, watercolor stickers. There are eight sheets in this pack that you can customize with any of the coloring mediums to work with whatever project you have. So eight different stickers with um, some images, lots of word strips, titles, your labels, your arrows, and even an alpha. So that's a lot of fun. People have been excited about that. Another thing I like to layer, of course, I love metallic and I love these kind of little word and phrase stickers. So they work as well, uh, really well with your label stickers and um, just to add a little bit of bling to your finished project. And one more thing, people get a little nervous with stamping. So this is one of the items to get you started is a silver uh, rub on. So then you don't have to worry about it stamping perfectly, but when all your mediums dry, these layer beautifully on top of your finished project. We have washi tape, because I don't think you can ever have enough washi. Look at this one. Oh, the metallic is beautiful. And when it goes on, it is very opaque, so it's really fun. I d even did some uh, techniques where I painted a background and added the washi tape on top, and then you just have a really nice color set as well. And they vary in sizes, which is fun. It's not just all one width of washi. It goes from a wide washi to a nice narrow washi. Oh, I'm running out of breath. There's so much to share with you. 
roller stamp, you can't have enough roller stamps. And I like to use these for backgrounds. You have phrases, so once you ink them up, we can just then um, stamp away. And of course, I said ink. Let me share a super exciting ink product that I have. These are color wheels, and they've been well loved at the show already, so I have color all over them. And I'm just gonna show you one. So there's two different color wheel sets. So this one is the cooler palette, and what's really fun with this is the inks slide out. So if you wanna ink your edges, stamp your inks, and guess what, the packaging's pretty, and that would have me sold before I even knew what the product was. They are uh, pigment ink, so it's a great stamping ink, and as well, because it's pigment, it takes a little while to dry, you can run it through your stencils as well. What else can I share with you? Markers, I love to doodle. So um, we came out with this marker. They're like a paint marker. They're not super opaque, so they won't be um, completely opaque on black, but they do show up on black, so you could do fun technique with that. But look at it on white. I love these, and the color palette is so much fun. And then, of course, a traditional set that uh, has a white, a silver, uh, pardon me, a white, a gold, and a black in a medium, um, uh, nibbed pen. So they're fun, just good for doodling, good for journaling. You have lots of embellishments that go with this set. I love the paper clips. So we did uh, metal paper clips. I love the binder clips. So those are great as well. I can use when I'm using um, a product I'm going to show you in a second, a junk journal. Holds my pages um, open while I'm painting. We have books of tags because I like to layer. So tons of tags, price points really good on here. For all my planner lovers and people who love to have the little magnetic bookmarks, but look, the bling is beautiful on here. And then another thing I wanna share with you is um, this is really exciting. I um, love tissue paper, but this tissue paper isn't like other tissue paper. This is water reactive tissue paper. So the fun thing with this tissue paper is that it has pigment built right into the tissue. So when I add water, the pigment will release. And I have a layout that I'm gonna show you that has a technique. I literally just got this in my hands before I left, so I thought I've gotta show you because this will not translate well unless you see a technique done with it. So see this light green in the back? That is just the light green tissue paper. I took that tissue, I crumpled it, and then I took the green, the dark green tissue, crumpled it, put it on top, misted the heck out of it, that color transfers and you get this batik watercolor finish. So if you're a die cut lover, it's a great way for contained mess and simple, again, look at all I needed was the water reactive tissue and water and whatever shape you wanna put it behind. You can do this with die cuts that I layered. I had a, a silhouette die that it was laying around. It was a butterfly. I have a card I'll show you in a second that I did with that one where I literally just put the die on top of the card, put the tissue on top, misted it, and it completely masked that area and you had the color background with the butterfly. It's super fun. This is another one as well with um, I decoupage. I made sure the medium was only underneath so that the tissue would still react, misted so the color would bleed through. I punched some little circles, wet them to transfer color, and then you don't have to throw. That's the other thing. When the tissue you've used for color transfer, dry it out and run it through flower dyes or whatever. It's not garbage once it's done. It actually is already tie-dye built in when the water releases the pigment. So it's fun and exciting. I say this is like, some of my techniques are from kindergarten where we weren't afraid to try things. I put them back into my mixed media art. So that's lots to share already. Well, guess what? I had to do one more thing. I love to still, oops, create art when I'm on the go. So I made a to-go art book. So when you open this up, it has binding rings and pockets. So this isn't to store every item that I have. This is store what I need um, for the actual project I'm working on when I travel. So the fun thing is, see the holes are punched, the binding rings are punched for the stencils. I have a um, pencil case that works in here. There's also, I don't have the sample here, but there is a little board that has paint brushes on top of it and it fits in here as well. So I can customize what I need to put in my journal to take it with me. 
and then you zip it up. It's pretty to look at. It goes in my purse and it's easy. Say I'm flying and I just want to bring my watercolor um, uh, art, pardon me, my watercolor um, paintbrush and I want to bring my art crayons that's easy. I can get it past TSA because it's not a, a liquid and I can still make art on the go. I love to make mini books and junk journals. So I came up with a junk journal binder and this I like to practice my techniques in with my art to go binder. And these pages as well have interactive bits. There's three different paper styles this comes in. A mixed media or a multimedia paper, mixed media paper, a craft paper and a watercolor paper. The difference with the mixed media paper and the watercolor is they're both thick cards, but one is texture and one is smooth. So you can mix that through, but the binder comes with on its own tabbed pages and mixed media pages. So even there's the ink, how well it stamps. So it's a lot of fun. The stamps stamp beautifully. Um, you have art to go. I don't, you can use this to store. The binding rings are the same. So if you wanted to store your stencils in here, you could use that. You can use this for whatever you want to make your art with. And of course, to take the storage one step further, I love containers and tins. So we made this little tools of the trade tin. And do you see the little arm here? Goes in and out to keep the tin open when you're not using it. But super fun, it has a matte finish and it's not too heavy, so easy to ship. And uh, then you can keep your bits because my paints aren't gonna fit maybe in the art journal, but I could throw this in my bag and take it with me if I wanted, or it looks cute in my studio, which is important. So I don't know, there's lots to look at. I'm super excited, there's more to come. It's a great place to start. I want to take the fear out of mixed media. This isn't to replace what you have, it's to complement what you have. In, even if you're a novice, scrapbooker, mixed media artist, to an advance, you can use these products if you want just kind of a fresh color palette, butterflies and rainbows. So it's super fun, lots of projects for you to see so you can get some inspiration, videos to come so I can help explain all of these products, um, even they're quick. So we can start, let's start with the basics and then we can get to the detail. But I'm really excited to share this with you and I'm excited to share it with scrapbooks.com. And if you have any questions, I'm easy to find. Just come and find me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm happy to help.